welcome to lecture 21 which is on uh, various remote sensing sensors. So, here in this lecture we will talk about the broad uh, different types of sensors and how they are classified and what is the utility for each uh, sensor for various applications. So, we begin the lecture. Uh, we know that uh, uh, you know uh, satellites uh, are carrying different kind of sensors and they are mounted on these platforms and the uh, sensors are collecting the refracted radiation from the earth surface. So, this is the reflected radiation which is captured by the sensors uh, which are stationed which are mounted on the satellite. So, these sensors what they will do is they will record the reflected energy which is coming from the object also in addition the emitted energy or back scattered energy from the object. So, emitted and back scattered energy which is coming out from the object it is also captured by the sensor system. So, that what the sensor will do it will convert the analog signals uh, which are entering into this and convert analog signals into digital signals. Now, the thing which has to be remembered is that uh, every satellite can have more than one sensors. So, we can have several sensors in one satellite itself with different configuration with different characteristics. So, we can get multi resolution data, multi spectral data from these sensors as well. So, uh, this is uh, uh, analog uh, to digital conversion. So, we uh, call it A to D conversion. So, what is doing this analog signal is a kind of a continuous curve as you can see the top curve here. This is the analog signal and that digital signal uh, becomes the kind of a very uh, harmonized kind of a uh, signal here. So, these signals are converted energy into a voltage systems uh, which is an analog to the digital converter turns into the single integer values. So, at the end what we are getting once this analog signals are converted into digital signals we are getting the value in the form of the bits and bytes 0 and 1. So, we will talk about the digital numbers also because these are very important to us the combination of bit and byte will give us the digital number at that particular object location. So, each of the location will have a certain combination of those bits and bytes when this is converted into digital signal and the combination of the bits and byte will give us uh, a value which we call as the digital number or popularly known as in remote sensing D n. So, what is the D n? It is the reflectance radiation which is reflected or emitted from the object of the earth surface and that has been converted into some numerical value. So, that is the D n value. So, this reflectance jo, this will depend upon the uh, atmospheric condition as we know or from previous knowledge it will depend upon the season of the year, it will depend upon the time of the day when we are collecting the data and also physical and chemical characteristics of the object. So, this is a factor reflectance which we are receiving or the dn value which we are receiving from a particular object will not remain constant throughout, it will vary it will vary because of the time of the day, it will vary because of the characteristics physical and chemical characteristics might change. It will vary due to the seasonal changes which are taking place uh, and the atmospheric conditions. So, uh, we have to see uh, that this how we can actually make best use of the digital numbers and how we can identify if we have to identify the change also in a particular object which is taking place. So, uh, we have reflectance from the smooth surfaces, we have reflectances from the rough surfaces and uh, these reflectances will be different. So, uh, from a smooth as well as from the rough surface and this characteristics uh, will allow us to identify that particular object. For example, uh, water and 
roads will appear darker in the image because there is a low reflectance coming from these objects and partly scattered or absorbed by the object itself. So, these uh, radiations uh, as we can see when these are recorded by the sensors, they are actually uh, converted into the digital signals which we call as the digital number and then it is transmitted back. So, we can see in this diagram here that the satellite is converting those analog signals into digital and it is transmitting back to the ground receiving station. So, at ground receiving station the data is being transmitted and at this receiving station this data is processed. So, there are certain corrections which are applied. So, pre-processing of the data is done at the ground receiving station and then the entire data is archived, segmented, archived so that this can be given to the user on the basis of their demand and used. Uh, by the user for some application purpose. So, that is how the sequence takes place. So, these, these sensors are continuously transmitting the data at the ground receiving stations and ground receiving station is taking care of the pre-processing part and segmentation part and archive part. So, there is a term here is called instantaneous field of view, very popular term it is known as IFOV also. When uh, some system is there and it is scanning or it is looking down at the earth surface. So, we can see here that this is making a certain angle. So, A is that angular uh, value and B is the area which is covered on the ground at any given instant how much is the area seen by a sensor from a certain height. So, height is a C here if I change this particular height then uh, the area covered will be uh, you know this particular B uh, instantaneous field of view will become larger and larger. So, if I reduce the height this will become smaller and smaller. So, this uh, angular aperture is a factor which is sensitive to the electromagnetic radiation because the distance between the object and the sensor would increase. So, this IFOV is a uh, a parameter of the distance. So, this will change as you are changing the height of that and um, in the previous lecture I have explained you that uh, there are satellites which are moving at a closer uh, height, there are satellites which are moving at a very high altitude. So, this IFOV will change. So, this IFOV the instantaneous field of view uh, which is uh, is seen by a particular sensor at any given time uh, it is called the resolution of the cell. So, this is B here is the resolution of the cell or the area covered on the ground by one pixel. So, the pixel term has come from the dimension of that cell. So, individual cell has a certain dimension we call it a pixel or the IFOV or the individual cell area which is covered by a, a particular sensor device at any given time. The strength of this measured radiation when uh, the reflectance is reaching to the sensor it will depends how much radiation is arriving at the sensor will depend upon the strength and if instantaneous field of view is small our resolution will be very very good and uh, that less radiation as reaching to the sensor the signal will be strong. When IFOV is large, so we have a poor spatial resolution and signal will be weaker because it is traveling a very very long distance. So, instantaneous field of view is a small instantaneous field is large, now it is related to the spatial resolution or the strength of the signals which is received at the sensor. So, if we see the configuration of a digital image, so digital image uh, is cons uh, consisting of several such pixels. So, several such pixels you know when the satellite is scanning the whole of the earth in different orbits. So, in one orbit it is covering a certain swath. So, if I am showing the number of pixels which are covered in one swath and this uh, row is the direction of the satellite motion. So, 
you can see a uh, large number of pixels which are arranged in the form of a two dimensional array. So, it is a two dimensional array kind of a matrix here uh, where several pixels have been arranged in row and column. So, each pixel now has uh, uh, three characteristics associated with it and that is the path number and the row number and also the digital number of that reflectance value at that point. So, each pixel can be defined by its coordinate system in other words path number, row number, x and y and its z attribute would be its digital number. So, we will have three dimensional coordinates to define a pixel. So, this is the entire image and due to this d, d n values we can get the gray uh, scale values, gray scale image which are discrete in nature. So, you can have very very large number of pixels uh, in the image and each pixel can be geographically located by its coordinate systems as well as uh, you have the third parameter associated which is called the digital number. So, this digital number is very very important to us in remote sensing because further analysis uh, particularly when we carry out uh, digital analysis the, this value is very important. So, I am showing you various images because uh, we get several images from uh, one satellite having different sensors. So, we can get several of these images uh, and uh, each of these image now from one sensor they will have uh, same area covered and the uh, number of rows and number of columns will be equal uh, of the images which we are getting from one sensor. So, each pixel now it is representing some area on the ground. So, if I want to find out how much is the total area covered by one particular scene on the ground, if I know the number of pixels in a row and I know the number of rows, so I can find out the area. So, that is the a way to calculate how much is the area covered by a particular scene on the ground by knowing the dimension of the pixel by knowing the number of pixels in a row and number of rows. So, you multiply you get the area. Now, the intensity of the pixel the d n values are stored in the form of the binary digits bits as I told you earlier. So, for example, now 8 bit image will have 0 to 255 gray level value. So, total will be 256, 0 is also counted here. So, total values will be 256 ranging from 0 to 255, where 0 indicates uh, perfect uh, black pixel and 255 indicates a perfect white pixel. The reflectance is maximum, 0 means no reflectance at all. So, if I say 11 bit digital number it means 2 to the power 11 and if I expand 2 to the power 11 it becomes uh, 2048 values. So, 0 to 2047 gray levels digital numbers will be present. So, what is the meaning of that more the number of uh, more the values digital numbers present in the better is the contrast of the image the clarity or the identification of the object. So, we require the images with higher and higher bit data 11 bit or 12 bit something like that. Now, the uh, sensors are mounted on different platforms, different platforms are there. So, you can see that there is a drone UAV then um, aerial platform is there, satellite platform is there, airborne SAR. So, there are different platforms and at different heights these sensors are placed. So, we are bound to get uh, different resolution data from these sensors. So, if we look at the uh, spectral uh, uh, resolution of the sensor some sensors are monochrome uh, they will give black and white data we call it a panchromatic data some sensors they are giving us uh, the data in several spectral bands. So, we call it the multi spectral sensors they are using the characteristics mostly the visible part of the spectrum. Then there are sensors which are hyper spectral in nature the range becomes very narrow actually the division becomes very narrow 
and the contiguous data. So, here you can have very very large number of images. So, you are getting one image or at a time you are getting several images ranging from 3 to 10 and you are getting more than 100 images from the hyperspectral data. So, you have to carry out uh, analysis from those images by knowing their digital number. So, when we categorize the sensors you know different sensors are mounted on the different platforms and the sat satellites. So, we have broad two categories of those sensors and these broad categories are number one is the active sensor and the second category is the passive sensor. So, one is the active sensor and another is the passive sensor here and under the two categories also we have uh, further categorization which is the scanning type and known scanning type. So, you will find under the both category active and passive we will have scanning, known scanning, we have the imaging type, image is formed and we have the known imaging form where the uh, image is not formed, the data is collected numerically in some form. So, we have um, several list here for example, under imaging active category we have synthetic aperture radar data under known scanning known imaging category we have microwave altimeter laser distance meter and so on if we talk about the passive sensors then we have under scanning categories we have tv camera as the example under uh, known imaging we have the microwave radiometer or the gravity meter so these are you know some of the sensors which we are very frequently using in remote sensing so, let us talk about the those two broad categories passive sensors and the active sensor. So, here the passive sensors are those sensors which uh, basically here uh, you know are dependent on the sunlight. So, they are not active all the time that is why they are called passive sensors here. So, whenever which part of earth is sunlit uh, they will record the reflected radiation from that part. So, they are not active all the time when uh, uh, there is no reflection coming out from the natural sunlight, uh, uh, there is dark portion of the earth they are not active there, but active sensors they are not dependent on the source. So, our in remote sensing the illumination source is the sun, but if we are using active remote sensing active sensors then we are not dependent on the sunlight. We can actually capture uh, the reflected radiation by uh, throwing our light from our own source. So, we illuminate the object using our own source of energy and capture the reflected and the emitted radiations coming out from the earth surface. So, they are active all the time. So, let us see the properties of the passive and active. So, they are uh, uh, passive sensors which depend upon the sunlight only, they are measuring the radiations which are emitted by the target as well as the reflected sunlight which is reflected from the target. So, example could be a, a normal camera, scanner, radiometer, spectrometers and uh, they are using uh, visible part, infrared part also and sometimes they use the microwave region also. This is the example of the passive sensor. So, here the sun is illuminating sunlight is falling on the earth and it is illuminating the earth surface the satellite is capturing that and you get some images. So, these are the example of the images which you can see. So, from the passive sensor, but when we look at the active sensor where we have a one or source of illumination we are not dependent on the sunlight the images can be taken at any time of the day. So, here um, they are measuring the back scattered or the reflected radiations which is coming from the object and the examples are microwave radar, laser scanners or camera with a flash gun. So, we have our own flash gun if the lighting condition is poor the flash gun will operate we have our own source of light. So, these are some of the examples of the active sensor. So, you can see in case of the active sensor the example is the radar here it is sending the illuminating the object and capturing the uh, reflected radiation and this is the kind of the image which you are getting from the active sensor.
So, uh, passive sensors as I told you they are scanning type, non scanning type. So, we have a, a list here what are the examples of that this table shows in summary the list what are those non imaging type sensors and what are the imaging type sensors and uh, what is the uh, additional feature in that sensor. Summary of the active sensor we have again two categories here non scanning type and scanning types the examples are given in this particular table microwave radiometer gravity meter uh, no they are the non imaging type. When we are talking of the imaging type we are uh, infrared kind of a uh, and we are talking of the scanning type is we have a TV camera and microwave radiometer and so on. So, these are some of the examples of active sensor as well as the passive sensors. Now, each satellite as we know that carry more than one sensor. So, you have several sensors. So, uh, as the sensor technology has advanced now the there is a possibility of integration of active and the passive sensors into one system has also emerged. So, there are satellites which can carry now both type of uh, sensors the active sensor as well as the passive sensors simultaneously because of the development of the technology. Now, the sensors which are based on the scanning mechanism. So, we can do the classification on the basis of the scan how they scan the entire earth surface. We have under this category electro mechanical type discrete detectors type whisk broom and push broom type of scanners and also we have digital frame cameras similar to what we are using in our day to day photography. So, if we look at this particular diagram it shows uh, you know different type of sensors their configuration as you can see a normal scanner will have a scanning mirror then we have a push broom type of a scanner where the uh, detectors are arranged in one line then we have a whisk broom uh, type of a rotating mirror and then we have a digital frame camera kind of a where uh, the all the detectors are arranged in the row and column and in one snap we can cover the whole earth. So, on the basis of the scanning mechanism the sensors have been categorized now. If we see now the scanning mechanism of different sensors. So, earlier we had a rotating mirror this rotating mirror will move from west to east the satellite will move from north to south and it will try to scan the uh, entire swarth width. So, you remember the swarth width from one end to the another end of that strip. So, it will cover that uh, the rotating mirror, but this due to the rotation of the mirror there were some errors which were introduced in the data set. So, later on some improvement was done and then we had the whisk broom type of the scanner. So, they are across track. So, when the satellite is moving now uh, the entire swarth width is covered and uh, then uh, number of pixels will cover the entire swarth width and the whole of the strip would be covered as you can see in the diagram here this is a whisk broom type of a scanner. So, across track scanning and whisk broom scanning they are used in the uh, Landsat sensors. So, prior to Landsat 8 it is a series of the satellites these sensors were used. Then the second category the push broom scanner. So, in the push broom scanner you can see the scan the detectors are arranged in a particular line and pixels are recorded line by line using the forward motion of the sensor. So, here the less distortion is uh, less across the track there is no moving part. So, you do not have any distortion present in this particular data set. So, most of the uh, satellite systems now are using push broom uh, scanning technology. So, a spot satellite IRS, QuickBird, Orbu, Iconos. So, there is a long list of the satellite which are using this push broom kind of a scanner because uh, the distortion is uh, very less distortion of the information is very very less here. So, this is the digital frame camera when we have a digital camera how the picture is captured by multiple CCDs. So, these multiple CCDs are arranged in the row and columns and then these are indicating the different uh, wavelength region in which the data is captured. So, in one snap in one go the entire area which is seen by those different CCDs 
uh, the entire area will be captured in different wavelength region. Then the sensors are classified um, as I showed you in the diagram imaging and non imaging sensors. So, imaging sensors will measure data over a very wide area. They are usually on board the satellites or aeroplanes uh, having some kind of a instruments which can image the whole area. But non imaging instruments are used at a certain low height. So, they are uh, development of the new instruments, development of the new technology or um, radiometrically and spectrally uh, correct the measurements that purpose these are used. Here in the table you can see that there are different type of uh, sensors which are listed over here uh, radiometer, altimeter, spectrometer, lidar sensor and sonar sensor and their applications are given. So, some are used for mapping the ocean surface topography, some are used for topographical mapping uh, for example, the lidar data. So, various applications are there and these sensors are operating in various wavelength region ranging from the infrared microwave, radio wave uh, and uh, acoustics like sonar. So, uh, when uh, we talk about the sensors, so we have uh, several category of the sensor, there is no actually uh, well defined way to categorize the sensor. We can categorize the sensor, we can classify the sensors into different categories depending upon their use, depending upon their utilization. But these sensors have the different specifications, different resolution, they can provide you uh, multi spectral data in number of wavelength, they can cover different different area. So, uh, we have to identify first of all uh, the requirement of the sensor according to our project because the sensors are categorized based on the heights as you have seen the geosynchronous and the sun synchronous based on the wavelength region in which wavelength a particular sensor is going to operate. Whether we want thermal infrared part of the region, whether we want the microwave or the visible part of the spectrum depending upon the application. So, if we if we remember the spectral signature curve probably we can find out what is the best wavelength region for identifying features from that. Uh, based on the source of illumination whether uh, it is active sensor or it is a passive sensor whether we want only in the daytime uh, images or we want images during the night time also when there is no sun illumination or it the sensor has its own source of illumination. So, 24 hours data we can get from these kind of active sensors which are having their own source of illumination. So, based on the source of illumination also we can categorize based on the scanning mechanism um, push broom type or the whisk broom type of the scanner or the mechanical scanners are there and based on the imaging systems. So, we have uh, the systems which can provide you the image of the area, but we have the sensors which can provide you the digital data like if you are working with the spectro radiometer. Um, it can provide you the reflectance values, it will not give you the image, it will provide you wavelength versus the reflectance value. So, those are the known imaging systems. So, uh, depending upon our requirement whether we want uh, uh, to apply atmospheric correction or radiometric correction to the data or we want image for carrying out the analysis part and to what level we want the information to be extracted, then we have to go for the proper resolution. So, resolution versus wavelength versus area versus the objective they are all related to each other while we are selecting a particular sensor for application. So, this is all about the different sensors here. Thank you.